Mozart was a hustler. His days started at 6 a.m. and ended at midnight, filled with church gigs, private lessons, concerts, and composing. When he arrived in Vienna in 1781, he immediately began setting himself up to be the performer-composer of the town. And since he was a pretty good pianist, there was no better way to do that than by writing and performing piano concertos. But he didn't just write and perform the concertos. He organized the concerts, rounded up the audience, and sold the souvenirs. He was VP of Sales, Marketing, and Production at Mozart, Inc., although, to be fair, he learned from the best. His father, Leopold, did the exact same routine when he was promoting young Wolfgang and his sister, Nanerl, as child prodigies touring Europe. Music was the family business, PR was the family side hustle. Mozart was also making his way toward a big opera career, but the season of Lent put an annual stop to that because opera was way too much fun for Lent in 18th century Vienna. Stage productions of all kinds were forbidden, and that just meant that it was the perfect time for Mozart to show off his keyboard chops. Mozart performed this C major piano concerto at a Lenten Academy, and it was the first of many successful self-produced performances. Part of the reason for Mozart's success was his ability to read the room. He knew he had a mixed audience. Some people were there for entertainment, some people were there for serious music, and he made sure that everybody left happy. He writes, these concertos are a happy medium between what is too easy and too difficult. They are very brilliant, pleasing to the ear, and natural without being vapid. There are passages here and there from which connoisseurs alone can derive satisfaction. But these passages are written in such a way that the less learned cannot fail to be pleased, although without knowing why. Amazing composer, equally amazing salesman. This concerto is a great example of that balance. Mozart often uses the key of C major for music that feels regal. And Mozart begins with a march-like rhythm in the orchestra. But the piano insists on being a little more poetic, and there is a tension throughout the movement between those two characters. For the second movement, Mozart originally planned a serious minor key adagio but instead settled on a lush, almost pastoral andante in a major key. And then the final movement takes some left turns. What starts out as an upbeat finale quickly veers into sad, slow music. And keep in mind, 18th century music was practically defined by the idea of a single affect. One movement, one mood. So changing tempos and keys in the middle of a finale is pretty unusual. And Mozart doesn't just do it once, he does it over and over again in ways that you never see coming. This concerto would have kept Mozart's listeners guessing until the very end, and it will certainly do the same for you.